this lesson, we are going to discuss about rotation about a fixed axis. This is the second type of motion in planar motion of rigid body. So as we have discussed previously, rotation about a fixed axis is where a rigid body rotates about a fixed axis. For example, in this case here, the rigid body will have a, this kind of motion rotating about this axis here. This line here indicates the axis of rotation. If we look from the frontal view of this rigid body, uh, and suppose that we have a few points on the rigid body. So basically, the rigid body is now having a rotation in this direction. Okay, this will be the rotation of the rigid body. And we can see that point O is basically the center of rotation. And suppose we have a few points on the rigid body, let's say point A, point B, and point C. Throughout the rotation, this point will have a circular path. So this will be the path of motion of point A following this circle here. This is how point A will move during the rotation. And also... Um, the rotation of point B throughout the motion point B will rotate or move in this circular path and also point C throughout the motion point C will also move in this circular path Okay, so after undergoing the after undergoing the rotation, suppose that this is the initial position, and this is the uh, position after it undergoes um, rotation about an axis passing through point O. So here, theta here is known as the angular position which has a unit of radian or rad. If we do d theta over dt, we will get the angular velocity which is denoted by a symbol of omega. And angular velocity has unit of radian per second. And then if we differentiate omega over time, we will get the angular acceleration. And this is represented by symbol alpha, and which has the unit of radian per second square. This is uh, similar to the linear motion. In linear motion, we have the velocity v, which is equal to the differentiation of displacement s, ds over dt. And we have acceleration a, which is the differentiation of velocity over time, dt. And we can rewrite this as a dt equals to dv, where from, from here, from here, we get dt is equal to ds over v, and therefore we get a ds is equal to v dv. So these are three basic equation in linear motion. The same can be done for angular motion. 
we have omega which is the angular velocity that is equal to the change of angular position over time d theta over dt and then we have alpha which is the angular acceleration that is equal to the change of angular velocity d omega over dt we can use the same substitution like what we did here to get alpha d theta equals to omega d omega so these are three uh, basic equation for angular motion so in a rigid body rotational motion like this the rigid body undergoes the rotation but the points on the rigid body or the particles on the rigid body this point here this point and this point here uh, the particle can never rotate all particles on the rotating rigid body undergoes curvilinear translation now let's take a look at a point p on this rigid body undergoing rotation about a fixed axis so we can draw a position vector of point p with respect to the center of rotation of point o so this should be r of p we can write it as r r p or r p slash o okay and then since the rigid body has an angular motion of this this would be the omega of this rigid body the angular uh, velocity of this rigid body so point p should have a velocity pointing up this will be the velocity of point p vp how do we determine the direction of the velocity of point p let's take a look at uh, the path of motion of point P say that this is this is point O and this is point P over here and this is the path of motion of point P so this will be this will be the position of point P initially and after point P has moved up here this is new position of point P this would be the new position of point P let's call this RP prime for example what we have here is we can draw here the change of uh, position of point P or we can call this as delta R so in this case we have delta R which is the change of uh, position of point P which is equal to the displacement okay. so previously we have identified that the change of displacement over time is equal to the velocity so we have here the velocity V is equal to the change of displacement delta R over the change of time so delta r over delta t is equal to the velocity so this is the velocity of point p so now we would like to know what is the direction of the velocity of point p so how is the direction as i have drawn here pointing up let's say delta t is approaching zero which means that the value of delta t is very very small if delta t is approaching zero which means that the the change of time is very very small the rate of change okay so if delta t is approaching zero 
this means that um, delta r is approaching zero so what does this mean this means that if delta r is approaching zero this means that rp and rp prime the original position of point p and the second position of point p almost fall on the same line okay so if i draw this let's say that this is the this is the original position of rp so this is rp and then because delta r delta r here is now very very small then rp prime is also on the same line so this should be now rp prime okay so almost fall almost fall on the same line because delta t is approaching zero then delta r is also approaching zero so if the rate of change is very very small the rate the rate of change of time is very very small like this then uh, we can say that uh, delta r is basically always perpendicular to r in this case uh, delta r here is over here so then it would be the velocity is always tangent to the path so this would be the velocity of point p okay so the what we have here is the velocity the velocity v of point p is always tangent to the path this only happens for the rotation uh, about a fixed axis type of motion so i'm going to draw another example here so that you can understand better let's say we have something like this let's say this is our rigid body here in form of a in form of an arm like this and then this rigid body is is pin connected at this point okay like this it has a pin connected at this point and then it has it has an angular velocity it has an angular velocity like this so this is the motion of this arm here it rotates like this let's say we want to look at the point p over here so this is basically point p up there and then let's say we want to draw the path of motion of point p so because this arm here rotates about this point about this fixed axis then point p must have a circular path of motion okay this is the path of point p with with this point here being the center of rotation so i'm going to write here that uh, this is the center of rotation so this is the center. imagine as point as the arm here has moved up until here for example so this would be the new position of of the arm so this would be point p so according to what we have here the velocity of point p is always tangent always tangent to the circular path so in this case in this case here the velocity of point p must be pointing this way okay tangent to the circular path so this is vp at this moment and after point p has moved here the velocity of point p point p should be up here the velocity of point p is now tangent to the circular path so now velocity of point p is pointing in this direction and then let's say if we have let's say that this arm here has moved here okay this is the new position of 
of the arm and then this point P is up here this is point P so the velocity of point P should be tangent to this circular path and it should be pointing in this direction okay this is what it means by the direction of uh, velocity of point P on a rigid body is always tangent to the circular path okay the gray circle here indicates the path of point P this is the circular path of point P okay so here we have uh, discussed uh, the direction of uh, the velocity of point P in the case of rotation about a fixed axis so okay now let's uh, now let's take a look at um, this point P here just now we have we have already uh, determined that this is the uh, r of the position vector of point p r p okay and also we have identified the direction of velocity of point p which is tangent to this path v p okay so since this is a rotation motion and we are dealing with tangent uh, of this circular path in the case of rotation motion normally we are not going to use the normal Cartesian coordinate of x x y and z but in this case we are using the we are using this tangential coordinate this is tangential axis Axis, and there's another axis which is pointing to the center of rotation pointing to the in the direction of center of rotation and this is known as the normal axis normal axis okay so normal axis is always is pointing to the center of rotation just like the x and y axis if for x axis we have unit vector of i okay and y axis we have a unit vector of j so for tangential axis or t axis the unit vector is indicated with u t Okay, with a hat on top of u and for normal axis we indicate the unit vector for normal axis with u n so these are the unit vectors unit. okay so now uh, we can rewrite the vector of v in unit vector form we can write this as v times u t okay this is a vector form of velocity v and this is v u t we write this in form of unit vector okay and then from our previous uh, lesson we know that v is equal to the change of displacement over the change of time ds over dt let's say this is the path of motion Okay, this is the initial position and this is the final position. So S in this case, the displacement in this case is basically this part here. Okay, the magenta part here is the S, is representing S. Okay, so if we define this angle as theta, from um, from our mathematics um, knowledge we know that this s here is equal to r times theta where r is this this is r this is also r okay 
So S equals S is equal to R times theta. So we can rewrite this term here. We can rewrite this into uh, R times D theta over dt right because s here s is equal to r times theta so r here we can bring in front and we put theta here so this becomes r times d theta over dt so this is v equals to r times d theta over dt and from uh, from our previous lesson also we know that d theta over dt or the change of angular position over the change of time is indeed equal to the to the angular velocity omega is the angular velocity so since d theta over dt is equal to omega and then we have we can substitute this in here and finally we got the equation to determine the linear velocity of point P on a rotating rigid body. So V is a vector V is equal to omega cross, this is a cross product cross the position of point P. So V is equal to omega cross R. So this is the formula to calculate the linear velocity of point P. So we have determined just now that our first equation V is equal to omega cross R. Okay, this is our first equation that we can use to determine the linear velocity of, of a point on a rotating rigid body. So now let's take a look at the acceleration. So the acceleration A is equal to is equal to the change of velocity over the change of time. A equals dV over dt. Now we have determined uh, previously that V is equal to omega cross R. So we can rewrite this as D times omega cross R over DT. Okay. And we can use product rule to solve this. Cap. For D over DX of UV this will be equal to u dv dx plus v du dx. Okay, so this is product rule. So when we apply product rule here, so using product rule, we can rewrite this as d omega over dt cross r plus uh, omega cross dr over dt okay by using product rule from here we can transform it into this form okay now this d omega over dt is indeed equal to the angular acceleration okay so we know that d omega over dt is equal to alpha this is the angular acceleration okay so here we have alpha and then we have cross r here this is a vector cross r plus omega cross here dr over dt dr over dt is h is actually equals to is equal to v dr over dt is equal to v 
and from here we have v is equal to omega cross r this is also a vector and this is a vector so here we can write this as omega cross r so we have alpha cross r plus omega cross omega cross r so in this case we have three cross products okay here we can use um, to solve this we need to use a vector triple product okay where vector triple product says a cross b cross c for example is equal to b times a dot product c minus c times a dot product b so here we have omega cross omega cross r which is in a similar form to what we have here for vector triple product so this will be equal to this will be equal to omega omega times omega dot r minus minus r times omega dot omega Okay, and for for dot product, uh, since we know that the angle between r and omega, so if you look at like this, okay, so if this is uh, this is y, this is x, and this is z axis, so what we are calculating here is in is in x and y plane okay here we have let's say here we have this circle here okay and vp in this case is pointing is pointing up in y axis so vp is in y axis okay and the rotation of this the rotation of this is in in z axis the rotation okay the omega is in z axis is about z, z axis rotating about z axis so in this case we write omega uh, sorry omega with unit vector of k and the velocity p is unit vector j and then here we have this r or r here in this case is in uh, i unit vector so we can see that the angle between uh, between the position vector r and and omega is actually 90 degrees here okay with the angle between r and omega is 90 degrees so because in order to solve this dot product here we can also rewrite this as uh, omega times uh, omega r cos theta that is how you calculate the dot product and in this case here we have r times uh, omega omega cos uh, maybe we call this as gamma okay so theta here is the angle between omega and r so we have identified that the angle between omega and r is 90 degrees so here we have so here we can substitute here 90 degrees cos 90 degrees which is equal to zero cos 90 degrees which is equal to zero and here 
uh, gamma here is the angle between omega and omega of course this is equal to zero there is no angle between between omega and omega because it is basically the same thing so the angle is equal to zero so cos zero will be equal to one okay so here we have this part here is equal to zero equal to zero so this part here is equal to one is equal to one therefore we have the equation for linear acceleration of point p on a rotating rigid body a is equal to uh, alpha cross r we bring this term here down this is the first term okay we bring this first term here to here so we have alpha alpha cross r now we have this term here that we have just calculated so the first part here is zero so this is gone zero and here we have minus uh, minus r and then omega times omega a uh, scalar here scalar form and this is equal to one so we have minus omega times omega is omega square in scalar form times r in vector form so this is the equation that we can use to calculate the linear acceleration of point P on a rotating rigid body. So notice that um, the acceleration uh, equation here has two terms. The first term is alpha cross r and the second term is minus omega square times r. So the first term basically represents the tangential acceleration and the second term here represents the normal acceleration.